Hello and welcome back to Train Simulator 2021. I'm Joe and today you find us sat here in our Class 220 Virgin Voyager operating a service up towards Edinburgh. I believe that this particular service has come from Plymouth and we're here at Moorthorpe about to turn off to the left here where we will join the East Coast Main Line and, uh, and continue our journey up to Leeds. Let's just get those uh, those windscreen wipers off because they're a little bit irritating on the Just Trains Voyager. And now this is a scenario that I created myself and uh, I did it probably well over a year ago now. Uh, but, oh my god, yeah we'll, we'll just have intermittent, thank you very much. Uh, yeah I did this scenario way over a year ago and uh, so I'm not entirely sure how factually accurate it'll be. It's set kind of in the year 2005, 2006, uh, obviously Virgin Trains cross country took over in 2007. Uh, you've got a nice northern liveried 3 to 1 over there that we're just about to overtake. Very kind of them to wait for us, isn't it? Now I have a feeling um, that we're gonna, it doesn't say it when coming from Morthop, but I think it goes down to 25, there you go, and, uh, and it will now penalise me. But I'm gonna stay up at 40. Because I think that's the junction speed anyway, to tell you the truth. I, I think you can go over here at 40. I could be mistaken. I mean, when I used to come over this junction, it was when I worked for Northern Rail, so we certainly didn't go anywhere at 40, pretty much. Because uh, we'd obviously have stopped at Morthorpe, where uh, where we've just started from. But yeah, so now on the East Coast Main Line, uh, we're using Leeds lines today. A fantastic route available via Alan Thompson Simulation. Uh, there will be a link to that in the description providing of course I remember to do so. I definitely do like this map. Uh, this map? No, we're not playing OMSI now are we? It's uh, this route. The Leeds Lines route really is a favourite of mine. It reminds me of Microsoft Train Simulator MSTS back in the day. Uh, do you remember playing that? I had all three of the European Barn, European Barn uh, add-ons. The East Coast Express Volume 1, London to Peterborough, the East Coast Express Volume 2, uh, Peterborough to York, and, uh, and of course the East Coast Express Volume 3, Leeds Loop, which obviously featured uh, this particular section of routing. And we of course on that did have a Virgin Trains Voyager, uh, we had, what else did we have now? Off the top of my head we had a, a GNER Class 91 and Mark 4s, GNER HST, a regional railways Class 158 that you used to have on this on this particular Morthorpe route. Uh, so yeah, you know, this, this particular line, I mean it's been out for a while now hasn't it, but when they announced that they were doing this line it, uh, it did bring back some happy memories, uh, particularly of driving on this route. And of course, uh, since then I have worked on this route, I've worked trains uh, for Northern Rail from Sheffield via Morthorpe, up this line through uh, Wakefield Westgate. I've also worked trains down to Doncaster down this line. Uh, class 321s, 322s, Pacers, 150s, 158s, you name it. Uh, most of what operated out of Leeds I have worked. And, uh, and of course the first route that I signed was Leeds to York via Garforth. So you know, it's sentimental. It's nice to be able to get a nice, uh, get a nice journey over this. I'm hoping that they are still expanding Leeds lines. Um, I mean, it's, it's been quite a while now, hasn't it? And we've not really heard of any sort of expansion. It would be really nice if you know if they were going to put some more things in. I particularly, and again, there's no element of truth in what I'm saying here. This is just what I'd like to see. Uh, I'd definitely like to see the lines uh, Leeds to Sheffield via Castleford. That'd be a good one. I mean, the um, they could have a chat with that uh, chap that did the Peniston line because he's done quite a lot of that route already hasn't he? He's done Sheffield to Barnsley. I know it will probably need bringing up to a more modern standard because that's been out for a few years as well. Uh, but it's a good, it's definitely a good kind of starting point isn't it? Uh, and then of course you've got Barnsley to Wakefield Kergate which uh, we, we'll see when we go over the, uh, the viaduct to Westgate very shortly. And then uh, the run via Castleford into Leeds. You know it would be quite nice to get some of that on. Up to Huddersfield as well, that would be a great triangle 
uh, to do, wouldn't it? Wakefield up to Huddersfield and then Huddersfield to Leeds, you know, it, it would be brilliant. And of course I've worked a hell of a lot of trains down to Huddersfield and do continue to this day, you know, so uh, that would be a route I'd like to see via uh, Healy Mills. And of course via Dewsbury into Leeds to get a bit of Transpennine action. And then, of course, you'd be able to uh, you'd be able to drive Huddersfield straight up to York on. Uh, and as there's a 185 coming to Train Simulator, hopefully not too far away, um, then that would be a really good route to use that on, wouldn't it? I can't remember to tell you the truth exactly how much scenery I put on this uh, scenery trains I put on this this uh, this watch me call it. Uh, so you've got the lines off to Wakefield Kergate there, that's a diversionary. I think you can get round to Crofton Depot that way as well. Uh, but if we uh, if we go on the map view, where are we? You can see that, that this particular line branches off here. And uh, so you've got Street House up there. If you like my uh, NIMBY Rails series, you'll see all of that. Is that Crofton there? Oh, heck. We'll just cancel that off. And then, uh, of course, you can go... Up to uh, up to Wakefield Kergate there. It's a diversionary used by Northern, uh, just down there. I don't know if cross country use it as well. I imagine they probably do, but uh, it's a useful one to have in case the East Coast Main Line is blocked. Of course, isn't it? I do like the Voyagers, you know, I've always liked the Voyagers, and uh, it's a shame the Voyagers don't really receive a lot of love uh, amongst enthusiasts, um, particularly because obviously they've replaced the HST, so you know, any train that replaces the HST is automatically the spawn of Satan. You know, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, oh, is this Sandlin Abrig we're just going through now? Certainly looks like it, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, any any train that replaces the HST is the spawn of Satan. Uh, that's just how it seems to work with uh, with enthusiasts. Um, you know, so the, I, I kind of get why the Voyagers, you know, they, they do get a bad rap. They're also not particularly long trains, are they? You know, they, they are short trains. And of course, they're a DEMU, diesel electric multiple units. You've got the constant hum of the engine uh, underneath, which, uh, you know you don't get on a local hold service. They're also tapered in so they're quite claustrophobic. I quite like the big windows though, it has to be said. I mean, I've always been a lover of, uh, of the class 185. You know, I've made no secret of that. The 185 for me is the perfect DMU. Uh, from a conductor point of view, from working it, you know, the cab door, you've got your window you can look out of. It, you know, it really just is the full package, the 185. It's not without its flaws, you know, I think the first class is in a bit of an odd place, you know, everybody's walking through it. You know, I, th I think certain aspects of it could be better, uh, but it doesn't change the fact that I think they are very, very well built trains. Uh, as well, the Siemens, you know, when you buy anything from Germany, that it's going to be fantastic. That's just, you know, how it works. You buy a BMW, you know it's going to be it. You buy a Mercedes, you know it's going to be brilliant. Siemens washing machine, Siemens train, you know that it's just going to be fabulous. As so you've got the single line joining in here on the right hand side, that comes around from Wakefield Kirgate. And uh, we did used to have some services when I worked uh, for Northern back in day, uh, where we used to go from Huddersfield down to Wakefield Kirgate, we'd then change ends in Wakefield Kirgate, and then we'd come up this section of track into Wakefield Westgate, which uh, we are now approaching. I forgot to mention we've actually just gone over the lines from uh, from Wakefield Kirgate. I should have shown you them, but uh, I was too busy waffling on about Siemens trains and uh, and whatnot. Now, are we on time? We're due out at 46, so no, we're a little bit late, but it's not the end of the world, is it? I don't know roughly where we're meant to stop, because I don't believe... Is there any stop boards? No, there's no stop boards, so I don't know if we're just meant to go right to the end of the platform. Or uh, or what, but we'll kind of stop around here.
please do just ignore the fact that they are all uh, LNER stop boards, uh, LNER coach boards there. Uh, we'll just ignore all of that because uh, this is 2005 and LNER is not a thing yet. That happened about, what, 12 years later? Bloody hell, 12 years. We'll probably get a big fat X on this now because we're, uh, we're not on time. There we go, we got an X, but never mind. Right, so we now shut the doors. And wait for the guard's buzzer. And away we go. Now obviously most of you will probably know what 10 buzzer dispatch is, so you know, if you if you do, then uh, obviously just disregard the next few few moments of conversation. But uh, all that beeping there, what what that is, is that's, ten, that's what is known as 10 buzzer dispatch. Uh, so it's just dispatching a train, it's the guard to the driver, but uh, unlike conventional methods where the conductor would shut the doors when all is clear, go buzz buzz to the driver, and then the driver will go buzz buzz back and set off. Uh, the Voyagers don't actually have control panels by their doors for the conductor slash train manager. Uh, so a system called 10 buzzer dispatch is what is used. Now what happens is the driver, uh, the conductor gives one, one, two, uh, to the uh, to the driver, who then gives one one two back, shuts the doors. So the driver shuts the doors on a Voyager. Uh, just while we're going past Renthorpe goods, uh, Renthorpe passenger loop on the left there, or Renthorpe sidings, uh, we used to sit in there for about forty minutes when we did the Huddersfield to Wakefield service. You know the one I mentioned where we changed ends at Kergate and went into Westgate. We'd sit in those sidings for about forty minutes. It was great on a summer's day, just sit looking out the window watching trains go past. Uh, but yeah, so uh, anyway, back to what I was saying, you you know, one, one, two on the buzzer, uh, from the guard to the driver, the driver then gives the signal back to clarify understanding, and then presses door close in the cab, either, uh, you know, either there or there. The guard then, uh, then observes all the doors closing, the driver doesn't observe the doors closing, and, uh, and then when it is safe, the guard then steps onto the train, closes their local door, and does the buzz buzz, and the driver buzz buzz back. Nice and straightforward, you know, it's, uh, I say nice and straightforward, it's a damn sight more complicated than it perhaps needs to be. Uh, I never really understood why the Voyagers didn't have uh, conductor slash guard panels fitted. It seems a bit of an odd one, because I mean, it can't have been Virgin Trains that wanted it, because uh, Virgin Trains ordered the Pendolinos at, at pretty much the same time, didn't they, from Alston? And they have, uh, you know, buttons for the guard to close the doors. So, you know, there's, uh, there's that. So it can't be Virgin, but at the same time, Bombardier, they built the Voyagers, and they build things like networkers. No, they don't build networkers. You idiot. Electro stars is what you were meaning to say. Oh, well, we've got Outward Station just here. Big gap on the other side. Uh, yeah, sorry. So, so they build. Um, they build Electro Stars, they build Turbo Stars, they've all got guard buttons as well, so I don't quite know why the Voyagers were ordered in the way they were. It's a little bit of an odd one, isn't it? But uh, hey, it's just one of the very quirky things that helps make our railway unique. Oh, hello, rain. We'll, uh, we'll get a bit of the old wipers on. We've not seen much traffic at all, have we, really? I mean, we should do shortly, because I know that there's a 45 departure from Leeds. There's also a 48 departure, uh, which is a northern stopper. That should be like a 142 or something like that, maybe a 144. And uh, I believe that's the M62 that we're just going underneath now. 
Yeah, that's the M62, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you need to, uh, yeah, you need to get some brake in, Joe. Otherwise you're going to be speeding. I believe the only tunnel uh, on this route between Leeds and Doncaster. It's only a little short one. Good old Just Train sounds there. <laughs> was it Armstrong Power Axe? Ooh, I can't remember. I don't know which one it was. I mean, 75 is, you know, 75 is, is quite quick. It is very quick, but it doesn't have to feel slow when you're driving in a Voyager. And what you've got to remember as well in, in the Voyager is your, uh, your seating position where the driver is sat. It's, it's quite a centralised position, isn't it? I know we're ever so slightly off to the left, but in comparison to things like 158s, you know, Sprinters, 185s, the driving position on a Voyager is very high up, so it does kind of give the illusion that you're not going as fast. It's like when you drive in a van. I mean, when we moved house and we had a Sprinter van that we hired, um, a Mercedes Sprinter van, uh, we were, you know, we were doing seventy down the motorway, but it didn't, it didn't feel like you were going fast at all. Oh, hello, little Northern Spirit pacer. That's interesting. I wonder what happened to the uh, the fifteen forty five express service. Where did that go? I don't know is the answer. So this is the part of the route now where we're bending round to the left. So we're coming up the other side of the valley to the Transpennine route, which is way over the other side now. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're, we're just going to slow down into Leeds, we'll, we'll join in at uh, Copley Hill Junction, where the Copley Cord is. Yeah, we're now bending towards Leeds. You see the uh, Leeds skyline just in the distance there? There we go, so just outside now you'll see we're going over the uh, the Trans-Pennine route, that's where uh, we go down on our 185s. Is there, is there a train there at the moment? Ah, it's a 150, very nice. And we're, obviously the route finishes there, but uh, that does continue further uh, in real life. Now the junction here, we, come, we can come across to go down what's known as the Copley Cord. It's just a single line bit of track, which as you can see, is the Trans-Pennine route there that we've just come under. You can uh, you can cut across if you you know if you go over that way. It just gives a bit more flexibility coming into Leeds. The lines from uh, Bradford Interchange coming round the left. So if you're ever going out of Leeds on a Manchester Victoria via Hebden Bridge, or indeed a Blackpool North service, uh, you will be heading up there. It goes towards Bramley, New Pudsey, and Bradford. And uh, I don't know if it's recreated well. The, can't see it from what I uh, can see, but Armley Prison is, uh, is just over there. So if you ever see like a castle-style structure on the left as you approach Leeds, uh, yeah, Armley Prison, a very high-security prison. It's bending round into Leeds now. You've got Whitehall Junction, uh, which is basically where the the lines from Skipton. Oh, we're missing some foliage there. Maybe I'm missing that uh, missing assets. But yeah, the lines from Skipton and Harrogate are joining us from the left there. Uh, 
and then of course that forms a triangle so you can go around to Woodlesford if you're going to Castleford. That bit of line, as far as I'm aware, only is used by empty stock and freight services, so... Uh, not used by any passenger services, as far as I'm aware, like I say, it's uh, just an avoidant line for Leeds. And then obviously that's the other part of the triangle that's joining us here. We've got green signals straight into Leeds, we are actually a little bit early, uh, which is always nice, isn't it? It's always nice to be early but I think we're going to have like a 10 minute waiting time sat here. Coming in on platform number 8. Ooh, and a nice uh, a Reva Trains Northern livery 158 there, Metro. Always a nice livery, I always enjoyed that livery. Got a GNER Class 91, or a Mark 4 set on the left there, but a Pacer Action on the right. Can't believe we're allowed to use platform eight. That's LNER slash GNER's executive platform. Are we? Uh, oh yeah, we're right down to the end of platform eight. has to be one of my favourite stations in the country, does, uh, does Leeds, and another reason that Leeds Lines is one of my personal favourites is just because you get to come to Leeds. I absolutely love Leeds Station. I can't really describe it, but uh, my granddad said, when because he worked on the railway, he said when you work on the railway, so then you, you walk down Leeds Station and there's a buzz, you know, there's a hive of activity. We're a bit far from the signal, but it doesn't matter, does it? You know, it says th there's this air of activity, you know, and people everywhere. And when you're walking through it in your uniform, you just get such a buzz, you know, and, and it you, like you're part of this. Shall we? Uh, shall we get a bit of a nice picture there? And it is absolutely correct what he's saying. Get a bit of, get a bit of that. Right, well, yeah, we're in Leeds. Uh, we're not due out until uh, where's the uh, where's the watch we call it? We're not due out until 16:08. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to bore you with uh, you know with with what's happening here. I'll, uh, I shall see you in a little bit. So with uh, two minutes to departure now, is the uh, the southbound service, the 16:11 departure, just arriving on platform 12D. It's nice, isn't it? Albeit quite loud. <laughs> that's obviously got a bit of waiting time there as well. Uh, there was a Transpennine service that set off uh, while I was uh, while we weren't looking. It was sat on 16. I hadn't seen, and uh, it was obviously doing a uh, what 16 1600 Liverpool service. Three car 158 in first Transpennine Express colours. So yeah, this will be around 2005. This scenario just before the 185s came in. And uh, the Voyagers, they don't normally tend to arrive as early as we have today. Maybe we should have been following something uh, up the East Coast Main Line. But, uh, yeah, it's not the end of the world. But they do normally have quite a bit of standing time anyway. I mean, according to the timetable, we were due in at 16.01, uh, not 15.57. But we were due in at 16.01, and they're due out at 16.08. So, uh, so, you know, it's, it's a good chance that if you are late, like we were late into Wakefield, you know, catch a bit of time up. Catch a bit of time up indeed. And uh, and this cross country always goes just in front of the Trans Pennine service. I think it's a Middlesbrough now. It goes at 16.08 and the Middlesbrough slash red car goes at about 12 minutes past or 14 minutes past. I can never remember. Right, we need to, uh, yeah, we definitely need to get ready for departure now, don't we? Uh, yeah. Where are we? Yep, all good. All is good. There's nothing that I need to do beforehand, which is all splendid. Just wait for the train manager.
Come on, 1608, love, let's... Uh, ah, there we go. There you go, so that's for me to shut the doors. But it's not simulated in this Just Trains Voyager. Then the interlock light should come on. The interlock light should really come on before the guard gives me two, because the guard wouldn't be able to give me two. Oh no, of course, on a Voyager the button must be working. It must be working on a Voyager, because otherwise how would they... Because uh, normally the signal buzzer doesn't work uh, until all the doors are closed and the interlock lights lit up, so you can't tell the driver to set off you know, while the doors are open. But obviously on a Voyager, the guard tells the driver to shut the doors, so obviously the button must work when the doors are open. Well, it must do, was it? What is the, uh, they wouldn't be able to do... Uh, to close the doors, and that would be a pickle, wouldn't it, if you could just never close the doors. So got Leeds East Junction now, heading out over Leeds. I mean, this particular section of route isn't a bottleneck in the slightest, going from, I mean, what, how many platforms have we got? We've got six through platforms, two bays at this end, so, you know, quite a few services. There's a service at least every, every, what, I mean, how many have you got? Two Northerns an hour, cross-country, Five trans pennines. There's, there's quite a few. <laughs> certainly, uh, certainly quite a few services up here. So going out, you'll see uh, Leeds bus station on the left there, full of arrivers, no first group stuff, and uh, an Enviro, which is uh, it's always nice. You know, I like it when uh, when the buses aren't just those president things. It's always nice when there's a bit more variation in the scenery. Coming round to Marsh Lane Junction now. And of course Richmond Hill Tunnel, the only tunnel uh, between Leeds and York. Well, on the, uh, on the Via Garth of Lyon anyway. And yes, it is a tunnel, despite the fact it's uh, quite large. It is still classed as a tunnel. You've got the, uh, the down line here, the up line there, and then on the left and the right here you've got some, uh, some loops, which uh, in a the morning they'll stack trains coming out of Neville Hill Depot on this, this loop here, so that obviously express services can go round. And then uh, they can queue them up on an evening going into the depot. Because obviously there's quite a lot. You've got East Coast things, you've got Northern, you've got uh, who else? East Midlands, they uh, they use Neville Hill Depot. Oh, we're just coming round to Neville Hill now as it happens. On the left hand side. And then on the right you've got a hell of a lot of freight, uh, freight wagons. Uh, I don't know if I've shoved enough of those in. Oh, you've got Cross Country as well at Neville Hill. Sorry, I'm forgetting about them. Have we got anything interesting in? Yeah, you can see there's, there's quite a bit to see. Bit of Midland Main Line. Ooh, Midland Main Line things. Very exciting. Bit of freight liner on the left. You know, there's there's it's a busy depot, definitely a busy depot. I remember we uh, we did our PTS personal track safety there for the role of conductor uh, when I was with Northern, and uh, they made us walk across. You know, show us how you will cross the line, etc., etc., on the sidings where obviously there, there wouldn't be a lot of trains coming through, and uh, and we were taught that you have to be a minimum distance of uh, 1.25 meters from the nearest running rail if the line speeds up to 100 miles an hour, and uh, and two meters if the line speed is more than 100 miles an hour. So, uh, you know, they made us stand next to the running line just there that we've been over, and uh, and there was a 185 coming in, and he says, oh, that's about 1.25 metres from the uh, from the nearest running rail, and this 185 is thundering towards us. I'm like, bloody hell, I'm not just going to take another step back, you know, just just make sure a little bit further away, because 1.25 metres, when, when there's one of these things hurtling towards you, is really not a, you know, not a long... Uh, not not a long distance at all. It's quite intimidating. It really is. It 
it does always intrigue me as to why this this particular section between Neville Hill and uh, and Colton Junction, which is just uh, just south of York, it always intrigues me why this has never been electrified. I mean, there's the apparently plans to electrify it. It just strikes me as odd that it hasn't happened yet. You know, it, it seems like a great diversion should the East Coast Main Line be blocked, for instance, to just shoot round here. Now, obviously, that is a diversion if the LNA, if LNA were using HSTs back in the day, but obviously a, a big fleet of their, or a big part of their fleet, oh, that's Crossgate Station, by the way, a big part of their fleet was 91s and Mark 4s, which obviously wouldn't be able to come round here unless they were being towed by, you know, something else. Obviously, now it's all Hitachis, isn't it? So a lot of those are by modes. So uh, they'd be able to, in the event that the wires went belly up, they'd be able to just propel themselves through on diesel anyway, wouldn't they? You know, so... Uh, it's kind of that little get-out-of-jail-free card with them. But yeah, it does, uh, given how long the 91's been in service, it just strikes me a bit odd. It's such a short distance, isn't it, really? In terms of the whole East Coast Main Line. They're just coming under the uh, under the M1 now. I believe it's the M1. Is it the M1 or is it the A1? I think it's the M1. Oh, a little 150 coming the other way. In first northwestern colours, no doubt. Very nice. So obviously, when you go under the M1, you know it's uh, your breaking point for Garfa for a lot of the drivers, say, in the uh, in the 185s, because obviously the 185s can stop on the. Uh, can stop on a 10 pence piece. The locos and the coaches, the 68s, are a little bit more difficult, as I proved in one of the videos where I almost missed Garforth altogether. Uh, but yeah, the 185s, as I said, the breaking points around there. Got Garforth here, a big gap on this side. And uh, the 185s are actually quite amusing because the doors on 185s are quite heavy. And the, you know, they're air operated doors. Because it's a camber that particular section of track. Sometimes when they press the button the doors just don't open. So I'm like, you have to push, you have to push the doors. Got East Garth of here. I mean if it were up to me I'd shut them both and have a station just in the middle called Garforth. So it's a good job that it's not up to me because I, I close quite a few stations that I just think are nonsense stations. I'm all for a stopping service, I think stopping services are very important, but I don't understand why we need two stops so close together. So hurtling along now, I believe that that's a 70. Now, uh, I think that this is not correct, to be honest with you, because we're approaching Micklefield. You see the crossover just before Micklefield there. Now, I believe that on Train Simulator it's got us breaking to 70, uh, which they have actually updated this junction, so you don't get a junction indicator going left now. You see we've got a junction indicator, or a feather. Oh, service stopped at Micklefield. Hello. Yeah, so we don't actually go to 70, because if you look going to Hull on the right, it's 80. Coming off this way is 70. They've, they've altered that now, so it's actually faster going to York than it is going to Hull, because most of the express services tend to come up this way anyway. You've only got one Transpennine an hour that goes down to Hull, and, uh, and the other service, I believe, stops at Micklefield anyway, so it doesn't need to be particularly high speed, does it? So now this is the uh, this is the fast section now up to uh, up to York, powering up, heading for Church Fenton. Hell, low bridge. It's a good job we're not in a double decker, isn't it? 
Apparently a lot of these bridges as well are private bridges, you know, for like farmland and things like that. Very, very impressive, you know, almost viaducts, you know, they're big, big stonework, stonework bridges. And uh, I was sent to one of, my, uh, one of my managers when I started at, uh, at the company I work for currently. I was like, oh, it's a shame that, like, you know, I'd, I'd, it'd be great if you could just park up and, and go and get some photos of trains, you know, get some spectacular shots, from, like, for instance, around this bend, if you were stood on that bridge, yeah, absolutely lovely shots over the top of, you know, passing trains, and uh, he says, unfortunately, it's, uh, yeah, a lot of those are private, and uh, you can't actually get onto them, the, the farmers own them. So uh, that is, if that is indeed the case, which I don't doubt what he says for a second, a very, very experienced man, been on the railway for uh, years and years and years. But uh, yeah, it, it is a real shame, it's that it'd be nice to be able to go and, and get some decent photos. Particularly as well that if wires are going up, you know, the, that's one less place that you can get good photos. It certainly is miserable weather, isn't it? I should really pick, you know, nicer weather for the next scenario that we do. Well, I have actually done the scenarios for a full run from uh, from where did we go from Aberdeen to uh, to Penzance. Uh, I think that uh, yeah, we don't have Aberdeen to Dundee because as far as I'm aware, that particular route hasn't been done yet. Uh, but I do have Dundee down to Moorthorpe, the full length of the route there. The full length of the route Aberdeen uh, Dundee down to Moorthorpe, and then we've got Sheffield to Derby and uh, Birmingham all the way down to Penzance. Uh, I've done a scenario for a full full journey. If you are interested in that, maybe at one point we'll do that, but it would be a long slog, wouldn't it? Like Dundee all the way down to Penzance. Certainly a long way. There we go, Church Fenton there. And uh, first bit of the route where we've been able to go up to 100 pretty much, isn't it? Well, there's that bit south of uh, south of Leeds, isn't there? But this is the only bit between Leeds and York. It's actually the only section of line uh, between Liverpool and Scarborough where you get to 100. Because uh, some people often ask, you know, why why 68s? So they can only do 100 miles an hour. Well, yeah, but they they don't need to go any faster, do they? For you know, for Trans Pennine services. And to be honest with you, the 802s don't get above 100 mile an hour between York and Liverpool. It's only, uh, only north of York up towards Newcastle where they can do 125. Certainly not a lot of traffic is there on this. I, uh, I, I thought that I'd included more traffic. Maybe I was using, was I using a timetable from, uh, I must have been using an old timetable. You know, so, uh, so there's, there's obviously less traffic. It's not like uh, not like today. Well, not today, because we're in the pandemic, aren't we? Currently, but uh, it's not like the May 2018 timetable where they wanted to train every five seconds and then wondered why there was delays and things. You know why it all kind of fell down. It's too many trains. Obviously, didn't uh, didn't have this problem in 2005. And then at this point as well, the Voyagers were fairly new. You know, so. See, I just think it's a very good looking train, albeit, again, like I say, quite loud. <laughs> but I, I do think they're a good looking train, the Voyagers, I, I think it's a shame they get such a bad rap. I've never been on one of the Virgin ones, to tell you the truth, I've only ever experienced cross countries, but when I used to commute, or I used to go in by train from Macclesfield into Manchester, I always used to go for the cross country over the, uh, over the Virgin slash Avanti. 
because I just thought that it was a lot nicer than uh, than a pendolino. And of course, cross country staff I always thought were a lot friendlier. Not not saying that everyone at Virgin slash Avanti isn't, but just everybody I've had experiences with with cross country have always been brilliant. You know, I've I've never been able to fault them. Nope. Bit of the old uh, DSD there going off. Usually I switch it off to be honest with you, but I thought, seeing as I'm, you know, we'll we'll drive it properly. We'll have the uh, have the DSD on. So this is Colton South Junction. You see the crossover there, and then the East Coast Main Line coming up from Doncaster on the right, uh, and that's uh, that's going to join us. This is Colton Junction, and you'll see the uh, the knitting overhead. Uh, it's just about to join us as well. There we go, back under the wires. And uh, and this particular train, where where was it going? It was just going to Edinburgh, this one, wasn't it? So it'll be under the wires for the remainder of its journey. So I imagine that cross-country, again, their, their next trains are probably... Uh, they're looking at Hitachi 8 or whatever they're going to call them. 806s, 807s or something. Because the amount of time that they actually spend under the wires, it would make sense for... Uh, you know, for cross country to have buy modes. That'll be a shame when the voyagers go. I don't imagine they're going anytime soon, you know. I mean, how old are they now? What, 20 years? Just less than 20 years old? I imagine they've got a bit of life in them just yet. I wonder when they, uh, when they do order new stock, I wonder if they've learnt the lesson and whether they'll order like seven and eight car units, maybe nine car units, you know, for the cross country services. Or do you reckon they'll order five cars and, uh, and pair them up? Certainly an interesting one because I know with the, with the pandemic at the minute, the, uh, a lot of the cross country services tend to be running around in multiple anyway, so you tend to have two four cars or a four and a five car. You don't tend to see two five cars together to make a ten car. Uh, I was told, and I, I don't know how, you know, if this holds water, but apparently cross country only have uh, are only available or only able, sorry, to operate nine carriage services maximum. So if they do operate two super voyages together to make a ten car, they have to lock out the back carriage. And they can't have it in passenger use. And that's what I was told about cross country services. I've never actually seen it in action, to be honest with you. Uh, so I wouldn't be able to tell you, but uh, yeah, certainly intriguing if that is the case. So got the Tesco Extra, park and ride on the right hand side there. You always know that you're nearly in York when you see the Tesco. Nope, we don't want to be accelerating, we want to be a bit of the old braking, thank you. And I reckon about, yeah, 39% should do it. Do you reckon we're going to get a clear run straight into the station? We can hope. We can hope. Might need a bit more brake in there if we're going to stop in time. It's always a bit of a difficult one, isn't it? The, uh, you know, kind of gauging it. I know the Voyager, the Just Trains Voyager's brakes have never been the best. They've never been the best. There is a patch that you can, uh, you know, you can download to get round that. I just need to get round to doing it again. So you've got Holgate loops on the left-hand side. Mainly freight that gets stored in there, to be honest with you. But uh, in the summertime, you'll see a, uh, an East Midlands 222 on a Saturday. Is it just the summer, or does that happen in winter as well? I can't remember. Is it in the summer it goes to York? No, in the winter it just goes to York. In the summer it goes all the way through to Scarborough. Is, is that what that is? So it doesn't sit in the loop when it goes to Scarborough. It sits down at Scarborough, obviously. Yeah, so coming into platform 11, what have we got coming out of, uh, is that a GNER HST there? It looks like it, doesn't it? 
Let's have a, look, have a zoom in and a nosy. It's a shame we've not seen... Oh, Network West Midlands, class 150. Oh, hang on, we're speeding here. Very nice. I do miss the journey I live in, seeing that around, you know, around York and, and all that. Gorgeous livery. Very striking. Oh, we've got a 158, a Transpennine Express. First Transpennine Express leaving off platform 9 there. Off it goes. That'll be going to Manchester Airport at this time, I'd imagine. So there we go. That's uh, that's our run from Morthorpe up to York. What do you think? Did you enjoy that? Let me know in the comments, of course. Do like the video if you did like the video, uh, because it helps my video get more views. It makes a happy Joe. And of course, do subscribe if you enjoy Train Simulator. We play a lot of Train Simulator on this channel, so uh, so do subscribe so that you never miss out on any of that. Uh, let's get stopped just there. Get the doors open. There we go. Until next time, cheerio. Goodbye for now.